My sister-in-law has always, and I mean always, been the jealous type. You see, she is wanting to have a baby now at the exact same time as me, even down to the same birth date. All because she is mad that I've been prettier than her, more successful, and now she can't let everyone know that I'm pregnant too. Guys, this story is so messed up because I'm about to tell you a secret that she just told me, and oh my goodness. My sister-in-law is really jealous of me, and especially of my looks. I never quite understood her jealousy, if I'm being honest with you. We did not grow up in the same family, and I did not share similar genes, and I've often thought to myself, I can't decide how I was born or how she looks. Still, the tension between us has been there for a long time, and... I feel like I can't put up with it and pretend like everything's okay. <laughs> well, to be fair, I was always the one who garnered attention. I was prom queen in high school, and I had a lot of friends, and my grades were pretty good. I do take care of myself almost religiously. I'm a model, so I go to the gym almost every day to make sure that I can be in shape. I have weekly skincare appointments and monthly lash appointments, and come on, you name it. But I've always thought of all this as a part of my job. I literally get paid to look pretty, and I do admit that I might have it easier than my sister-in-law because of my looks. Pretty privilege is real, and I know that very well. Working in an industry so heavily relies on appearances, and my husband is also quite good-looking. We met at the gym. He used to be my personal trainer, and honestly, I'm very happy with myself. My appearance, my marriage, and my model career... But I worked hard for it, and I don't think it's fair for her to project all of her insecurities on me just because I have the things that she wants. So, my sister-in-law, let's call her Sarah, struggled with many things. It all began during those wild high school teenage years when Sarah found it really hard to find her place. My husband told me that she had a lot of trouble at school, but I didn't get her um, the specifics. I just know that she didn't have very good grades and did not have too many friends either. Sarah and I actually went to the same high school, but we didn't know each other personally. She's two years younger than me, so it's not like we had the same class. She knew me, though. I guess because I was quite popular. Maybe she became really bitter and insecure during that time, even though I didn't do anything personally to her. I don't think I was mean in any sort of way to other people either. Well, let's go ahead and fast forward to adulthood. I met and fell in love with her brother. Throughout the two years of our relationship, there's been multiple occasions where I tried to get closer to Sarah, but it never really worked out. We would go shopping together a few times, and then I signed up for pottery workshops really close to her apartment, for the both of us, and sometimes organized gatherings and double dates. Sarah, uh, her love life is another story completely. It's messy, to say the least. One time, my husband and I went on a double date with her and this guy whom she met at the coffee shop. He did not offer to pay even for his part. <laughs> my husband ended up paying for all four of us, and the guy later told Sarah that my husband was showing off. I overheard him. I didn't like that and decided to confront Sarah about it, telling her he did not seem like a nice guy. She said she doesn't care because she's only going out with him for a bit of fun. I sent some tension, so I backed off. A few days later, she told my husband that I thought I could teach her how to date just because I was pretty, and my husband didn't directly tell me about it, but I read his messages. Yes, I'm not proud of taking a peek without my partner's consent. We've had a fight about this, but that's a story for another day, guys. All in all, she has a pattern of dating problematic guys for a very short period of time. Anyways, after two years of dating, we decided to get married. I started to see Sarah more often at family gatherings, and the tension just got worse and worse, and it also would go ahead and create tension between my husband and me, simply because apparently she would say things to him that he did not want to tell me about. A year into our marriage, my husband had a major career switch, and we moved to another city. That's when it all started to cool down. We only saw Sarah during the big holidays anyways, and then I went and got pregnant. The dynamics of our relationship took a sharp turn with the announcement of my pregnancy. Um, instead, uh, you know, of embracing the joyous news, Sarah's reaction was unexpected to say the least. At first, she was really nonchalant and we announced it at a family gathering at my in-law's house. 
and while everyone was cheering and celebrating, Sarah was just still. A few seconds later, when I turned to her, uh, she looked me dead in the eyes and said, Great job! It was supposed to be sarcastic, I guess, but I was creeped out a little. But I awkwardly said thanks, and she then turned to my husband and said, Well, that's all, right? And when my husband awkwardly nodded, she headed straight upstairs, and it was just a really strange thing. So, a mere week after my announcement, she dropped her own bombshell. She was also pregnant. Nobody was expecting it, obviously, considering her lack of stable relationships. Honestly, I didn't even know that she was seeing someone at all. We were all just concerned, and Sarah does not have a stable job, and she isn't quite sure what to do with her career. She graduated college with a degree in business, so I thought that she had a lot of job opportunities. But she's been switching jobs almost every six months. There's always something wrong. It's, if not for the tedious task, it's the co-worker for the company's policies. I mean, you name it. Anyways, she also tried to open her own business once, and her mom gave her $20,000 to help her set it up. My husband and I also gave her $3,000 with absolutely no strings attached. Four months later, it all went down the drain. So, we have a good reason to be worried because she hasn't been very good at handling responsibilities. And a baby is a huge responsibility. I was wondering if her child can get sufficient love and care from both parents. Anyways, what I was wondering is, should I say something? What do I feel like she's doing this because she's jealous of me, guys? Am I crazy? I also don't want to fight with my husband again. It's so mentally exhausting, especially now that I'm pregnant. He seems very protective of his sister, and Sarah's literally the one topic we seem to not be able to openly talk about. I don't know what to do. Update number one. First of all, a huge thank you to everybody who left a comment. I just want to address this comment that accused me of being egocentric when voicing my concerns. To be honest, Sarah's situation is much worse than, well, what I had revealed. I have a legitimate reason to believe that she could go to great lengths just to compete with me. I've mentioned that, well, we went to a pottery workshop with each other, right? Anyways, the one um, the, one of my favorite things to do is that as a hobby. So, I asked people to accompany me to the workshop like this a lot. There was this one time not long ago when I was in the city for a few days. I asked Sarah if she wanted to join me. I thought it could just be a bit of fun. Sisterly activity for us to bond over, but the experience turned out to be absolutely problematic. At the end of the workshop, we were supposed to make a presentation about our creation. I made a pink purple bowl, which was very girly, and Sarah made a very nice looking edgy pot. She made her whole presentation about how she doesn't like traditional feminine things, so she didn't want to make something pink. Then it was my turn to present, and she accidentally hit the table of my bowl, and it fell to the ground and shattered. Sure, it could have been an accident, no doubt, but when we left, the artist who left the workshop approached me and asked for my phone number. I said no and showed him the ring I left in my pocket. I took it out because I didn't want to be having it soaked in mud. Well, then he respectfully backed off, and then Sarah went home and told my husband that I took off the ring, which was why men thought that they could approach me. Well, he had a fight, sorted it out, whatever. But a month later, I came back to the pottery studio for another workshop with a friend. The artist who approached me was also there as a participant, and he asked me about Sarah. Turns out Sarah later approached him, went out with him twice, and ghosted him. I just found everything really, really freaky. This is not the first time that Sarah's displayed very questionable behaviors. I didn't know if she even had behavioral problems or if she just had a problem with me. So I went ahead to ask my husband uh, once if he thought his sister was completely normal. If he got offended just by hearing that question, I don't mean to imply that she's mentally challenged or anything. I just thought that there was something about her that seemed like bad news to me. It made me feel like she wanted to one-up me every single chance that she got. And the fact that my husband seemed to always take her side, it didn't really help, did it? Anyways, about this whole pregnancy drama, I haven't told anyone about my feelings at all because there are more important things to be worried about. My husband and I have been lining up some opportunities for Sarah so that she could at least have a stream of income. We're going to open an online store and let Sarah manage it for us. 
That way we can make all the important decisions, but Sarah still has a job and can't afford to raise her own baby alone. My husband has also tried to find out who the father is, but Sarah would not say. I'm praying to God it isn't the pottery guy. I don't have a problem with him, but I have a problem with the fact that Sarah ghosted him after getting pregnant with his kid. I mean, who the hell does that? If that's true, that means she's been doing this just to one-up me. I don't know. It's all such a huge disaster, and I'd say the worst thing is that my husband doesn't even know about her affair with the pottery guy. Should I tell him? He's going to be mad later if he finds out that I've known about this all along. Update number two. I'm sorry, guys. I know a uh, half of a year has passed and I feel like this mess is just getting messier. But long story short, we found out who the father is and no, no, it's not the pottery guy. It turned out that she hooked up with the guy from her previous workplace. And let's call him John. It seems like John is quite deeply in love with Sarah, but I'm still not sure what their relationship is. The way we found out about John was also so darn peculiar. He came to our house, which is in another city, by the way, to ask if we knew where Sarah was. Um, he said that he found out where I lived because Sarah told him that she moved there to be a model, meaning she lied, tried to cut contact with him, and told him that she was living in my apartment. I don't know. It's just all really, really weird. This guy, John, then tells my husband that he tried to ask Sarah out many times. But she always turned him down, and when he finally gave up, she had a sudden change of heart and made a move on him during a company party. They were on and off for a few months before she quit her job. She started ghosting him and told him that she had moved, and when he asked for her address so that he could send her a goodbye present, she gave him mine. He also said that he suspected Sarah might be pregnant because she asked him to drive her to the, well, doctors once, but asked him to stay outside. I don't know. It's such a mess. My husband confronted Sarah about John later, and she started crying, saying how scared she was getting into a serious relationship because of past heartbreaks. I got mad and asked her why she would get herself pregnant, because it's also such a huge commitment to me. A child is a bigger commitment than a man. I mean, let's be honest. I do love my husband, but I know I can always leave a man if things turn for the worse, but I will never, ever leave my child. I was just sick of Sarah's excuses for always choosing to do the wrong thing. But my husband got mad at me for how much I lacked empathy for his sister. We had another fight, and I left Sarah's place alone. My husband stayed with his sister um, that day just to make sure that she calmed down, and after the incident, I felt bad and visited Sarah a few times explaining to her why I said the things that I said, and I apologized if I added to the pregnancy stress. She was very receptive, surprisingly. She also said that she's reconciling with John and sorting things out with him. She even thanked me for setting up a business for her, which was really nice to hear, guys. The following months were absolutely amazing, and I mean it. Sarah moved to an apartment really close to her parents' house, even. And I was on the phone with the whole family almost every two to three days. We sent each other presents, and Sarah even visited me and my husband at some point. I actually thought that this was going to be the end of all the unnecessary tension. I should have figured it was all uh, nothing more than a facade. Sarah insisted on giving birth in the same hospital that I'm going to give birth in, for mental support or whatever she called it. So my husband agreed to take his paternal leave back home so that we could both move closer to his parents, and Sarah too, of course. We signed up for the same hospital in rooms right next to one another. Sarah was excited, and so for a short while I was excited for us too. Then came the labor. I started having contractions a few hours before Sarah did, but long story short, we were going to give birth on the same day. My husband and his parents were really excited, and my parents were flying from a foreign country, and they were also excited that I was giving birth on the same day as my sister-in-law. It was all very, very joyous. Hours later, I gave birth to my daughter, and I had some hearth problems. So they had to take her away for almost instantly, and right after I got to hold her for the first time. I was sedated for the rest of the day, so I didn't know what exactly was going on. When I got to talk to my husband the next day, I found out that Sarah had hastily departed the hospital with her newborn, citing fatigue as her reasoning. 
I found it strange that she did not stay for a bit longer, but I brushed it off. It wasn't until I returned home that the nagging sense of unease began to gnaw at me. I cradled my daughter in my arms and looked into her eyes, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Her features, they seemed unfamiliar, and panic started surging through me. Like a tidal wave, I mean, I thought that Sarah might have even gone and switched the baby with mine. At first, I thought that I was going crazy because after giving birth, I had just held the baby for a minute. And now my brain wasn't working normally and I didn't even remember her face correctly and it felt as if I was unable to recognize my daughter at all. It's been a week since the incident and Sarah still refuses to see me or show up at any family dinners. My husband and I are moving back home in two weeks and Ming... What should I do now? I don't want to sound very crazy. Update number three. Hey guys, I just want to let you know, it's been a few months since the birth of my daughter, and I've had some time to reflect on everything, and long story short, I decided to take a stand. So basically, I found out that when I passed out, my husband was not always beside my bed. At some point, he went to pick up my parents from the airport, but there was a traffic jam on the way back, and... There was a very small window of time when nobody was at the hospital with us. That might have been Sarah's chance to switch them. How she managed to do that with the nurses around, oh, I have no idea. And yes, there's a chance that I might be wrong, but I still need to get to the bottom of it. Anyways, I asked my husband to let me accompany her when he goes to visit his sister. I found it strange that she kept refusing to show up at the family gatherings and everything. I told my husband not to tell her that I was coming. I said I actually wanted it to be a sort of surprise, to say the least. Heck, I even brought her flowers and a cake. Yep, but she was happy to see me. Uh, not. <laughs> the moment she opened the door, I knew that something was wrong. She looked at me as if I were the police or something, and she immediately gets mad at her husband for not telling her beforehand. We were obviously weirded out by the unexpected reaction, especially when we were literally at her door. But then she played it off for some sort of frustration because, quote, I quote directly, the house is a mess. Yeah, that's her excuse. The house is a mess. But um, she should have prepared for my visit. As soon as I saw the baby in her cradle, I could guarantee that she was mine. I mean, I can't really go and pinpoint what the feeling was, but I was certain. I could feel my ears heating up, and the tears were every very much close to pouring down my cheeks. But I held back. I knew it wasn't the time to get all emotional, and I asked to hold the baby, and Sarah said no at first. She kept asking me to help her in the kitchen, so I pretended to go along with her request, but later found an opportunity just to go back to the nursery and steal hair from the baby. I'm going for a DNA test, and my heart broke when I had to leave her house, knowing that she might be keeping my baby, but I had to do what I had to do. Guys, I'll update you when the results are coming in. Update number four. I was planning to update earlier, but things were much more complicated than I thought. A lot has happened in the last few months, and honestly, it took me a lot of courage to write down these words. I still could not believe that this was happening. Anyways, I got the results back from the hospital, and Sarah was indeed keeping my baby. She made the switch exactly when I suspected she would, but the trouble started there. She wouldn't give the baby back. She also would not confess how she managed to fool the attending nurse. It took me much longer than it should, but I finally figured it out after a few days. So, I head back to the hospital, right, and ask to speak to the nurse in my room, but she was already leaving the place. They didn't know her whereabouts, and I assumed that my sister-in-law must have paid her a hefty amount of money to do something like this. So I took the DNA results with me and filed a lawsuit against both Sarah and the hospital. Well, that caused some tension in the family, but I couldn't hold back. Sarah was not willing to give the baby back. My baby. And my husband wasn't doing a damn thing about it. He said he wanted another DNA test just to make sure. But... We would have to wait for the results, and guys, I have no time at all. I ended up moving to my parents' place. They're staying in a rental before flying back home. But this is not even the worst part yet. I personally confronted my sister-in-law, and she had the audacity to argue with me about my baby. She said that I was pretty and 
That's why everyone only paid attention to me, and once I announced that I was pregnant, she couldn't bear the thought that now my baby would receive the same amounts or even more attention from everyone because the baby would be pretty, naturally. I can't believe the amount of jealousy this woman bears against me. She admitted that she didn't want my baby to receive the same treatment that her baby might never receive, which in my opinion is pathetic. Uh, anyways, I mean, why would she think like this is so behind me? So I assume she forcefully got pregnant at the same time so that she could swap our babies. Her insecurities and lies really know no bounds. Pretty quickly, I told my husband about it, and he could not even believe that Sarah would say those things. He confronted Sarah himself and drove to her house to pick up our baby. Then he drove to my place to make it up with me, and I know this is a lot of details, so I'm trying to just be as coherent as possible. I kept the lawsuit, and I'm in the process of hiring lawyers. My parent-in-laws have spoken to me since, and I don't know what's going on in their heads right now. And I do feel a little guilty that I'm taking their daughter to court. But I need to do what's absolutely best for me and my child for all I care about. Sarah has completely moved back with her parents, and they're the ones taking care of her baby. So, she hasn't been acting normal, as she keeps telling them to ask me for the baby back. She also refuses to hold her own baby and calls the poor child all kinds of things, like trash and ugly, <laughs> you name it. She seriously has a problem. All in all, I'm going to the bottom of this. There's no turning back now. Updates number five. Hey guys, so I know it's been a few months since I last posted. It took me by surprise to realize that many people are still curious about what happened with my baby. So I won the lawsuit. The court ordered the hospital to pay me a large sum, I mean a large amount of money, <laughs> enough for me and my husband to invest in our little family forever. But for Sarah, things are a little bit more complicated, see? She might have been dealing with mental problems without being properly diagnosed. But I've stopped feeling guilty about suing Sarah. I've made my husband cut contact with her, and she has committed uh, to it so far. It seems like he's also shocked at the fact that his little sister has always been more cunning and trouble than he thought. He still keeps in touch with his parents, but I don't. I can't get over the fact that they still chose to stand beside their daughter after what she has done to me. I don't see them on holidays, I don't talk to them, and I don't let my daughter see them either. My husband has, um, well, been trying to convince me to let him take our daughter to her grandparents at least once every single year. But I'm not sure about that yet, I mean... About Sarah, she's uh, been sent to a mental institute. It turns out that she has a very serious problem, which was overlooked by her family, including my husband even. Some accounts from her college also reported a few shoplifting incidents, which really shed light on Sarah's character. About that nurse at the hospital, by the way, who helped Sarah switch up our babies, she had to give up her licensings, and after it was found out that she was working at a local clinic, it would never be allowed to work in the medical institution again. It even made the local news. About my husband and me, we're getting stronger than ever, and I feel like his relationship with his sister was the only problem in our marriage anyways. So when that was resolved, everything felt so much easier. We moved back home and renovated our house so that we're ready for our own little family. We're trying to get pregnant again, hopefully this year or the next one. I've stopped modeling for a while to focus more on my business. As for John, after finding out about Sarah's crime, he broke up with her for good. He then demanded a DNA test to see if the other baby was indeed his. Turns out that it's not his. We still didn't know whose baby it was. Anyways, John took the news very calm. He even gave my in-laws a small amount of money to help buy things for the newborn and pay for Sarah's medication. I was really impressed by the way he handled things. Well, we later bumped into each other during a job fair at our respective company's organization at a university, and I decided that I wanted to partner up with him. All in all, things are going pretty well in my life right now. This is probably going to be my last update. A huge thank you to everyone who's reached out. I do appreciate it a lot.